Oh, well, now see, now that made it look spooky. European socialized health care, it's not spooky or riddled with problems. No, it's not. And you're not going to be more ill if we adopt it here in the U.S. Mm -mm. It's going to be sunshine and lollipops. Socialized medicine. Some will take a counter uh, to that and say, no, Glenn, I think it stinks on ice. But to find that out, you have to talk to somebody who knows the system firsthand. Daniel Hannon, he is a member of the European Parliament from Southeast England. Big fan, sir. Welcome. Thank you. Nice to have you here. In the flesh at now, do you think you could stay and run? Uh, you can't run for president, but, you know, you could just run for Congress or something. You have a lot of fans here in America. Yeah, certainly. I'm a, I'm a really big fan of your constitution, and I'm a pretty strict yeah. interpretationist about it. So you the presidency are, is not... Uh, <laughs> you are one of the only people... A politician that I've heard in a long time that say you're a fan of the Constitution. Not real popular right now here in America. Oh, you know, I, I'm maybe not popular among all the politicians, but yes. look, it works. I mean, look at, look at what it's delivered. It's made you rich and free and independent, yeah. and it has driven those values to every other continent in the yeah. world, and so that the world owes you something. Here we, here we have um, a, a Congress and a president that are not listening to the American people. Um, and they're not listening or reading the Constitution and about to deliver us the universal right to medicine that is just fantastic in your com country. Tell, tell me about how great universal health care is. Well, I mean, the, the most um, striking thing about it is that you are very often just sent to the back of the queue. You turn up with a complaint, with an ailment, and you're told, okay, how about uh, October of next year or whatever it is. And you're then not able to supplement uh, your treatment, your state health care treatment, with any private money of your own. Uh, people who had uh, conditions which they then tried to buy drugs for uh, independently, they were told that uh, their whole treatment would be, would, would be stopped. Now, I had a friend of mine, this is an amazing story, a friend of mine broke his ankle and he went into the accident and emergency. And it was a Friday night. Now, one of our national uh, traditions is that on Friday nights we all get drunk and have fights with each other. So there was a, a, long, a long queue of people to get in. And he, he said, look, I'm, I'm in real pain. Can I have some painkillers while I'm waiting? And they said, no, get to the back of the line. He said, look, I'll, I'll buy them. And they said, they became very aggressive at that. What do you mean you're going to buy them? This is the National Health Service, so we don't have any provision for uh, independent purchase of medicine. So that's the, that's the mentality. I can't, um, I can't imagine what Americans will do when they have to wait. I mean, we just put this up on the screen. Cataract surgery, you have to wait eight months. Hip replacement, 11 months. You know, you may be free, but what's your quality of life? You, 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 sure. you have to wait for 11 sure. months. Knee replacement, wait for 12 months. Herniated disc, five months. And if you can't work during that period, then you're losing income. So it's hardly free, is it? And in any case, it's not free because you're paying for it through your taxes. We just found out that, um, and God bless him, he's a, he's a guy I disagree with on, you know, on, on almost everything, and he is uh, my senator, um, but I don't wish him ill. But uh, we just found out that uh, Senator Chris Dodd has prostate cancer. I'd like to make a challenge to Senator Chris Dodd to go over to your country uh, and be treated with prostate cancer. Here in the U.S., five-year relative survival rate is 100%. In Canada, it's 95%. In the U.K., it's 77%. Quite. No, wait. That is, I mean, which is an extraordinary figure. You, th you think of those statistics, and maybe that explains why, as I understand it, your senators and congressmen are not proposing to yeah, oh, yeah. be part of this system yeah. themselves. Listen, our, system, our NHS came out of an, a peculiar time. We were, we were basically under full mobilization when we invented this, right? It was, we were, it was the middle of the second. It was World War II, 1944. So, so it was a time when we had food rationing, when everything had been nationalized, when we had hugely high taxes, you know, because everything had been conscripted into the war effort. And that was the, the product, that was the, the, the thinking that led to this state health care system. I find it incredible that a free people living in a country dedicated and founded in the cause of independence and freedom can seriously be thinking about adopting such a system in peacetime and massively expanding the role of the state when there's no need. Because they, they would say that this is going to save us money. Well, you know, it is the single biggest item of our government budget. Of course. And, it is, you know, the state generally doesn't do things as efficiently as the market does. Of course it doesn't. If you know that you're getting the same treatment without paying for it, you have no incentive to keep costs down. Daniel, what is, I mean, have you been, do you follow here in America at all what's happening on the ground with our politicians? Because they're currently getting hammered um, by the people as they're coming home. These, mm -hmm. these congressmen are coming home. And I... I I hope to God, uh, Congress, you learn from this um, because it's only going to get much, much worse for you. Um, 
what could they possibly be thinking? Well, I mean, I don't know, but I, I just say, as an elected representative myself, no politician can disregard his constituents' opinion. Right? And there's no dishonor in an elected representative listening to what his people want. That's, that's what we call democracy, right? It's not, there's not kind of weakness. That's, that's how the system is meant to work. So I hope that people watching this program, whichever side they're on, are going to make their views felt. Mm. And I hope that their representatives will listen to them over the summer vacation uh, and come back. I mean, quite apart from anything else, I just wonder, at a time like this, how the U.S. can afford something of this scale. I mean, maybe they're if things had been different... Us, they're telling us that we can't afford not to do it. They're telling us this lie that somehow or another, if we do this, this is going to solve all of our problems with our, with our debt and deficit. It's going to, somehow or another, we're going to save so much in health care. I can't imagine how you deny people service at a certain age for certain procedures, do you not? I mean, the worst, peop the worst thing to be is elderly under yeah. a system like ours. It's actually, to be fair, it's not so bad with kids. You know, it, it generally tends to reflect social value. But we have got, I could tell you horror stories about elderly people kind of left starving in wards. You know. And the amazing thing is, you know, why do we put up with it? The, answer, the reason we put up, we've put up with it for so long is because it has become such a huge system. It's got such an enormous bureaucracy based yep. around it, right? We have 1.4 million people employed by the National Health Service. It, it is the third biggest employer in the world after the Red Army in China and the Indian National Railways. Most of those 1.4 million people are administrators. The, the managers outnumber the doctors and nurses. And that is the electoral block that makes it almost impossible to get rid of. So if you do this thing, if you, and it's, you know, you're, you're going to decide it. But if you do it, don't imagine that you can come back and, and change your minds a couple of years from now. That's why I say, America, you cannot let this thing pass. You can't let any of this structure in. Because do you think the third largest employer in, in the, the world in the world do you think now you understand why they want it so badly? That's why this is going to change the face of America, and they'll do it forever. Daniel, thank you very much. Thank you, Glenn. We'll be right back.